Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I am a clinically active physician working in this space. And um, I, today's video is really just me thinking out loud and I'm asking for help. I'm asking for ideas, I'm asking for help. But um, I was just recently at the um, SMHP conference in San Diego uh, where I interact with a number of people working in the space. And I just want to throw out a few things that have all come to confluence. First of all, um, I was put on a panel with a, a wonderful panel um, where we talked about um, how we can change the uh, thought process in the country about ketogenic diets and the value of low carbohydrate or carbohydrate restriction as a therapeutic modality and how we can legislate, how we can find guidelines to help people. And the truth is this, that there is no vested interest in the government, anywhere else, US dietary guidelines are not really going to change substantially in as fast a time as people are dying of obesity and diabetes. And Nina Teicholz was on the panel and it was a good panel, but the legislative pathway is just too cumbersome. So is the grassroots community level. It's important, just like AA started as a grassroots uh, meeting. I think this is important as a grassroots, but it really doesn't address the primary issue, which is patients with metabolic disease cannot find help. So the other thing I get a lot, so that's one factor. The other factor, the other thing I get a lot is so many patients contact me on social media, contact my office. Who can I see in my local, uh, in my local area? I had to fire my physician because they want to put me on a statin. They don't understand my diet. They tell me it's dangerous for me. I'm looking for a like-minded physician, someone who can support me in my journey. I'm looking for somebody who understands. And there is nobody. Nobody's practicing this way or very few people are. Certainly, you can go to the SMHP website or a few other websites and Google your zip code, Google which physicians are doing this. But the reality is this, apart from a few physicians who've made this happen, either vicariously by mistake or intentionally, there are very, very few established metabolic practices as specialty practices. You can go to your hematologist, you can go to your endocrinologist, you can go to your cardiologist, you can go to your GP, you can go to your orthopedic surgeon, you can go to your pediatric surgeon, but you really don't have a uh, a therapeutic, therapeutic metabolic physician that handles everything. So if you've got polycystic ovarian syndrome, the gynecologist in and amongst her or his practice has to treat PCOS. If you've got diabetes, you have to go see the endocrinologist who in amongst all the other treatments, they do this. If you have <clears throat> cardiac issues from your metabolic disease, you have to go see a cardiologist who typically has no understanding of what we're doing. And, and we really want a specialist, a metabolic specialist, which is what SMHP is designed to represent as an organization. But we really don't have bricks and mortar places practices where a patient can go to get specialist treatment for their metabolic disease. And we should, there should be a specialist who can treat polycystic ovarian syndrome alongside cardiovascular, alongside diabetes, type 2 or insulin resistance diabetes. Really, it's the practice of medicine, the branch of medicine that treats insulin resistance. Uh, and all the consequential diseases, including obesity, including all of those. And with, uh, those practices are really rare and don't exist very much. Um, and then you've got place, things like Verta and levels that are treating diabetes and maybe branching out a little bit, but really not effectively treating the, 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 the entirety as a bricks and mortar practice. Then there was a really brilliant presentation by, the woman, by a woman by the name of Jody Nishida, who's actually a pharmacist. And she lives in Hawaii, and she's done a brilliant job of creating a cultural environment and a bricks and mortar space in which she practices and helps therapeutic carbohydrate reduction. And I just love what Jody has done. The problem is she's limited by not having that little MD hat. So she really treats carbohydrate addiction, in my opinion, or carbohydrate diet and vicariously treats these other diseases, but cannot directly prescribe or treat them, has to work with physicians to do it. But she's built up a great model, an economically functional model, um, bricks and mortar, where she helps people in Hawaii and has done a brilliant job. Certainly we, people like Dr. Tro Kalajan, Dr. Brian Lenskis, and a number of other physicians, um, uh, Tony Hampton, uh, several physicians out there have established this as a primary specialty for themselves and have the intestinal fortitude to fight against their colleagues who are saying, no, you're not allowed to do this. <clears throat> but 
it is challenging for someone like myself to treat diabetes. It is challenging for someone like myself to give advice to patients with PCOS. But maybe my thick skin, maybe my experience um, is I am able, I am comfortable working in this space because I have the evidence and the knowledge base. And as such, the challenge is that very, very few practices exist like ours. And yet there's this massive demand for practices. So given all of those, given all of those situations and also understanding, and I know that this may leave a sour taste in your mouth, but the reality is that we are a group of physicians who are practicing in private practice who have to make an income. We have overhead. My overhead is enormous and all physicians' overheads are enormous. And I know that you, the suffering lay public, may not completely understand the economics of a practice like this that we have to make money. One of the reasons why so many physicians are joining these big commercial physicians groups is because they negotiate better with insurance companies that mom and pops like myself have a tough time doing. Uh, I often get paid anywhere from 57 cents at the low end to $46 for an hour-long visit with a patient. I can't cover my overhead, let alone my own salary, on those numbers. So there's an economics to this. And more and more, the insurance companies are diverting their resources to hospitals and to these huge physician conglomerates where they can control the guidelines and control the, the way that this is practiced. When CVS owns Aetna, that's problematic, and they can control drug flow and they can control, control practice management. We've opted out of that, and, and what we do will stay opted out of that system. I still take insurance, but I really don't make money uh, taking most insurances. There are a few that pay as well. So we're increasing our self-pay model, but we've been very successful. We've been very, very successful with the model we've built. The other part also is we cannot rely on conventional healthcare systems, hospital systems, um, conventional large conglomerate pay groups to be able to employ people like me because we conflict too much with the guidelines. I'd much rather uh, subscribe a GLP-1 agonist than a statin. So that puts me in conflict with the guidelines. Um, so given all of that, we have a brilliant, a really effective, very helpful, economically viable model that is my bricks and mortar model. And we do very, very well. The problem is I'm a doctor, I'm not a businessman. And the things that we require is access to a business model, a scalable, we have this model that is scalable, but what we're looking to do is to partner with a, a like-minded business group, preferably who is working in the space, uh, um, who is able to scale and develop what we do. There are some wonderful, wonderful training organizations that train physicians like self. Nutrition Network has trained 6,000 physicians and allied health workers. So there are an abundance of people like me, experienced, eager, knowledgeable, who want to practice that are either afraid or economically not able to work into the space. And yet there is such an incredible need. So I can utilize the model of my practice. I can utilize my skills as a physician to recruit and train other physicians in the practice of this, although they've already trained in the theory. What we need is an investor group. We need an investor group and a group of people that can establish the bricks and mortar offices so that we can populate this country and other countries overseas with this model. And I, the, the sad part about my life is I am so busy on the treadmill of clinical practice, and that is my only revenue stream, that I cannot get off that hamster wheel to do this. So I have to stay, I've made the decision, I have to stay on that hamster wheel. I've got a young baby at home. I am the financial support, together with my wife, who earns a lot of money as well, in pharma um, or in, in a device industry, be that as it may. We need the fiscal support of my practice, so I can't step out of it. Otherwise, I would. Uh, and also, I can't let my patients go in that regard. So what I'm looking for is a like-minded person who is not a charlatan, not a fly-by-night person. But what we're looking for is a group of financial investors who can put up this money to support us 
in building and scaling this bricks and mortar. Now, we know that we've got a five to seven year recession coming up. So that can be problematic as well. We went through that with bariatric surgery in the 2007, 2008 housing crisis um, where that imploded. So I've, I've experienced in how to navigate through that. But I think worldwide, these kind of practices are going to be the new practice. We just need someone with the intestinal fortitude and the capital to see this as a long-term goal. So if you are on the clinical side, if you are on the uh, financial side or the administrative side, please reach out to me, leave comments, because this is a scalable model and its time has come. We have the organization SMHP, we have the model, few of us, we have the critical mass of physicians, and most importantly, there are patients begging to be seen that we cannot accommodate because we are too small. So please, if you are a real investor, I'm not talking about a small investor, this is going to require a lot of money to start. But I think the payoff long term is going to be there. My friend Elon Musk, <laughs> well, friend, countryman Elon Musk, uh, someone like that, that kind of money is what we need. But someone who buys into and believes in this long term, because it is real and it cannot be unseen. Nina Teicholt said that the US dietary guidelines for the last 15 to 20 years of uh, proposing these guidelines every five years were desperately wishing that we would go away. In fact, they've even hidden us away in their methods section so they didn't have to deal with low carb diets. We're not going away. And you know why we're not going away? Because it is the truth. And once you see it and once you live it, you can't unsee it, you can't unlive it. Well, you can't unlive it but then you get sick and die. So if you're out there, if you are interested in exploring this, uh, reach out to me, leave a comment below, reach out to us. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm looking in the back half of my life to be able to be part of a bricks and mortar scaling of this. Yes, some of it's done online, but ultimately we need bricks and mortar offices that practice this way as a specialty. Just like I can refer you to uh, uh, a pediatric surgeon, I can refer, if I am one, I can refer you to um, an endocrinologist or cardiologist. I want other physicians and patients to be able to refer their, themselves or have doctors refer people to us for therape therapeutic carbohydrate restriction, management of insulin resistance with all the medications and knowledge of all the different diseases from migraines to peripheral neuropathy. We do that now. We have the model. Give us a shout if you're interested. Um, this is a think tank discussion. I am the carb addiction doc. I am passionate about the space. I see the potential but I am aware of the downsides and we will have to fight battles along the way. Leave comments.